So I found a pretty neat effect for Roblox Studio, which lets you add something called a transparency falloff to your Roblox games. And what a transparency falloff is, is basically going to make objects appear whenever you get closer to them. And I'm going to overview it in this video. So as usual, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel, and let's get to it. So here is the forum post about the distance fade, which is a transparency follow effect for your games. And shout out to Xander22 for actually making this one, where they are saying that, hi, I made this module for a game I'm working on, and I wanted to release it to the community for use in your own projects. And here you have a little image preview, as well as a showcase video link right here. But I'm going to show it in these examples down here anyways. So what exactly is the distance fade? And the distance fade is a module that aims to recreate transparency fall of shaders commonly found in different games outside of Roblox, or also in different game engines. And the module essentially works by projecting the effect onto a table of target parts. And the parts can be arranged with varying sizes and rotations to create different shapes for these effects, where the family free is parts arranged in a curve. And you also have 21 different customization settings that allow for more complicated effects like animated texture, texture offsets and colors and more. And here is also this note saying that the module as it is now is more of a foundation than a perfect solution. It isn't perfectly optimized and still has some flaws. I made it for a specific use case in my game, map barriers that fade in when you get close, but designed the module to be fairly flexible in what it can be used for. I probably won't be updating it, so feel free to modify and redistribute it as you see fit. Where this line right here means that the object is basically open source, with for example Creative Commons 1.0 license. And if you are interested in other stuff that this developer makes, it will be on their YouTube channel right here. And I personally checked some of this stuff out, and it's definitely worth checking this guy's YouTube channel. And well, I'm also going to do this. But going back, now we have these examples, which I'm basically just going to show. So this is the force field, and it basically works as explained. Then we have another example of, I think, a gate, which is really neat. And then something really interesting, you basically just have this radius in which you can see the parts appear. And I can see, for example, this one being utilized in like really creative projects. And I see there is also a projectile example of the force field appearing on basically impact. And you can download these examples right here. And we are going to check them out in studio in a minute, but you also have links to awesome 3D illusions and color gradient effects by Powerbow, which is going to take you down to this pose right here, which is also worth checking out. They basically added a 3D effect to the force field, as well as an option to make the texture fade when you are near the edge of the part. And another example is this really cool parallax mapping effect by Bobcat, where again you have a few different videos, as well as the different examples that you can again download. And here they say that they made a working prototype, which implements parallax mapping to add a couple more options to the module, including a position offset and it looks pretty cool. So let's just check it out. And yeah, it does actually look really cool. Then another preview right here. And lastly this feared one. And again, you can download these examples right here. And now to continue with the post, you have the basic usage tab. We have the step one initialization, where you need to require the module and initialize it using the new constructor. And you can have multiple force field objects running at the same script. So basic object oriented programming. Then at target faces, where distance fade works by applying the effect to individual base part faces. And for every face you want to have the effect on, you need to use the add face with two parameters. Here's being the target part and the enum normal ID of the face. So for example, on the part to add, you have to use distance fade object and then the add face method Method on the part to add and the, for example, in normal ID front. And then running the effect, use the step method to update the simulation at any time and have it for a visually smooth effect. The target position parameter is a vector free type. So have the distance fade object step and then the target position, which is the position the effect is centered around. So for example, this can be maybe the camera position or the humanoid's root parts position. And here is a comment saying if parameter is nil, it automatically targets the local character's root part. 
but now you have the apply settings where you use the update settings method to update the effect at any time. And this applies the settings to all faces of that object. If you want to update the effect on individual faces, you can use the update face setting method. And again here you have the example of the new settings and there is going to be a list below which is actually this one. And you can see that there is a lot of stuff to basically customize. But continuing, you just use the update settings instead of the run service function, then you update the position. And also I'm wondering if this needs to be updated every frame. It would kind of be unnecessary for like the simple stuff, for example the distance outer, where you didn't want to have any like special custom effects. But for example for the texture color I can see this being utilized in the run service. But going back to the full list of settings now, you have stuff like the distance outer which is the distance at which the effect starts to appear, the distance inner where the distance at which the effect is fully visible, and basically so on. You have the edge distance, the texture, the texture transparency, texture color, texture size, offset, brightness, light influence, and basically all of these different properties of the surface GUI and the texture instance. But now more advanced examples can be found in the temple, temple? I mean template models drop down above. Also make sure to read through the module code if you want more in-depth explanation of each function. Please leave any questions or feedback and I will do my best to help. So that's basically everything for the dev forum post where you also have different examples made by different people as well as a lot of people going through some problems. So if you basically run into any issues with the script you can try searching all the dev forum posts and maybe also give some feedback. Well, let's actually move into Roblox Studio and see these examples now. So now when I'm in Studio, I need to import these models from files. By going into the workspace, then right-clicking on it and pressing on Insert from File. And here is the force field file, but I'm actually just going to import the rest of them first. So all of these models are basically structured in a way where they have the local script and they require the distance fade right here. But now before I do a playtest, I'm just going to move this one a little bit lower, just so it's going to be a bit easier to see. So here we have the projectile and it basically just hit this force field. And let's go to the different examples and one of them was placed right here. So this is the distance based force field which actually moves the texture too. And it appears more the closer the character is to this part but like I said you can also set it to be for example relative to the camera. Then here is the previously shown red barrier which is going to appear whenever we get close to it. And then the parts example was placed somewhere right here, and here it is. So overall this is pretty awesome. And if you are wondering on how this effect is achieved, it's basically by having a folder with all of the surface parts, and there is quite a lot of them, but if I for example just select them, you can see that they are kind of just either around my character, on order set positions. Where if I go closer to these parts right here, you can see that suddenly they basically fill into the parts that they are actually assigned to, and they are also moving dynamically relative to the character's position. And you can of course just move them around, but they are going to get updated anyways. Also, if I change the transparency to zero, you can see that in reality there are basically just different planes. And now if I go to closer to this example, you can see how they basically just feel. And same with these ones right there. And it's getting kind of laggy because all of these are basically the surfaces that are assigned to faces on these parts. But another good explanation is basically this block filling, and let me just deselect everything. Yeah, this block filling right here, whenever I'm in the radius. And just to give you a more of an idea, this is again the preview without the parts being selected. So it was basically pretty smart how the developer came up with this idea. But lastly, I'm also going to show the different examples with the parallel distance fade. So you have the hexagon berry right here and the modified distance script that you can get from the previously mentioned files, but also the modified version is in this model too. So if I do a playtest now, there is this example right here of the parallel force field version. And this even has a sound effect. So yeah, that one is also pretty cool. This one is basically adding the 3D effect to the previous force field. And let's just just quickly overview the script on for example the red barrier. So here you have the distance fade that's required from right here. Then again you initialize it and set these distance fade settings. And like I said they don't actually need to be updated under the run service. But then you make a reference to the folder which is the script at parent, basically this group. And then you add the face on the folder then the barrier which is this part right here in the center of the front and the back. And you use this step method to basically update it every frame. 
But yeah, that's basically going to be everything for today. So again, go check out this module and leave a like and subscribe to support the channel. I'm also going to leave a link to Xander's YouTube channel in the description too. But yeah, thanks everyone for watching. Hope everyone had a nice day and see you guys.